Hey guys, welcome to the Guang Zero channel. This is Zero, and today I have for you an Angel Archetype deck in the upcoming EX6 set featuring Dominimon. So, first, let's start off with our egg, Tokemon. Now, the reason we're running Tokemon over any other egg is because I'm also running the BT16 Palamon, and BT16 Palamon evolved over specifically Toko for Zero. And between all the Tokemon choices, I like this one the best. Uh, you can also play the BT11 Toko, which I believe let you draw whenever you play an Angel type. Um, but in general, this card feels much easier to trigger in this deck for me because you just draw whenever you add a card to your security. So between all the choices is probably the best one. Uh, next, we're playing the BT16 Panamon. This card is really good in this deck because as you can see, I'm opting to play all level 4 Angel type. So this card at the start main and then on play you can evolve any of your level three into a level four with angelmon uh typing or angel typing rather and because of that with this car most of the time your level four digivolution is going to be one cost next we have the staple bt14 panel one i think everyone already know what this card does at this point um you know you move out start main you evolve into a level 4 in your stack for free and then it also refund you a bunch of memory just a staple car will probably see play in every single vaccine yellow deck yeah that's not much else to say about it uh, next we're playing luxmon now the reason we're playing luxmon instead of any of the other level 3 option mainly because this is one of your few searcher that you have in this deck and also because it has angel typing and because it has angel typing, it also gets protected by your level 6 domini. And that's pretty important for just expanding on board and keeping bodies on board without having to dedicate more memory into an additional, you know, like having to digivolve this into a level 4. And then for our level 4, the first one was we're playing 4 of the BT14 Angelmon, which is a secret rare, mind you. But um, I think this card is just really insane in this deck. Mostly because it serves a bunch of different purposes. But primarily, you're trying to play this for the on deletion. Because whenever this card gets removed, or even as inherit, it basically heals you one. And because of that, if you can just constantly cycle this Angemon out of your security and have it just be like a blocker, that will heal when it dies. You can just have this be a card that when you lose a stack, it give you an extra security to pay for your additional cost. Just overall, really good card. Uh, and randomly, you know, if you run into virus type, you can just certainly have a degradation on a level four. Uh, overall, staple for the deck. Next, we're playing a EX1 Angelmon. Now, this is a pretty unorthodox choice, I have to admit, but. Primarily, the reason I'm running this card is because I think this Inherit is pretty necessary for the deck. Because, if you notice, this plus 1000 DP is until the end of your opponent's turn. So, what this allows you to do is, one, the mini protection does not work against battle or security. It only works against effect. So, being able to swing 13 let you pressure pretty safely most of the time. And on top of that, this allows you to play around specific minus DP threshold, which is pretty useful into a lot of the meta decks right now. Like for example, you're playing into you know Magnamon X with the Heaven's Judgment. Your Domini being 13 means that it required three proc to remove, as opposed to just two. So you're, that means a lot of times your opponent is gonna have to dedicate an extra minus six thousand to remove your level six stack. And in many cases, that means one of your additional level 5 get to survive. So, overall, I think this is uh, really important for the deck. Next, we have the EX6 Angemon. Um, I like this card a lot. I wish I had more room to run it at a higher count. But the issue is that I think your other level 4 is just a lot more important. And we're also only running 9 level 4, by the way, because in general, this deck cycle your level 4 pretty well because you're playing 4 of the BT14 Angelmon that just keep going back into security and you can keep grabbing it back out with Panamon and so on. So, yep, 
that's um your level four lineup next let's move on to your level five first you have angel woman ace another staple card that everyone is using at this point uh but in this deck in particular her effect is really powerful it's because not only is it a pretty efficient removal for a level five digivolve on top of that because you're able to use the mini protection to keep this car on board sometimes you can just sit this car on board and force your opponent to give you a free heal so they swing through your security and they can't remove this that's a free heal when you protect by burning a security to keep your stuff on board that's also a free heal um activate through tk activate through palamon just a very useful card in the deck in general so we're playing it at three count and notice that the minus 6000 dp lasts until the end of the opponent turn so it lingers uh that's going to be important as we go into our other card choices so keep that in mind next we had archai angelmon now i originally had this at four but i opted to cut it by one to run an additional angel woman ace um this card is pretty core to the deck because it allow you to stack It's an additional way for you to stack your security and the minus 4k is a pretty decent amount of uh, removal generally hit a lot of level four um and stacking on top of the mini it can hit specific target and the inherit is also very useful because the inherit allow you to be very defensive in many cases what i would do is i'll have a level six six uh with this inherit effect and i'll just block with the bt14 ancient mind just have it go into security and serve as an extra heal now this is a card choices that many people probably would not expect um this is the angel woman that was made to primarily work with mirai the reason we run it is because of alliance this deck in general kind of lacked the ability to pressure really well primarily that's an issue that most pure yellow deck run into and having alliance serve two purpose because one you are swinging generally much bigger number than what's available in security and it also allows you to swing like you know potentially swing over like a magna x uh 15,000 16,000 number depending on what you're using as a target um but yeah that's primarily the re main reason that you will run it now we're going to move on to our level six we have cherubim and ace this card is really useful for the deck it allow you to extend on board because you're protecting everything with the mini effect this card allow you to a lot of time get a pretty high amount of minus dp and again this is another minus dp effect that lingers until the end of your opponent turn so if you have enough target in this case uh say you have you know two bodies on board and you go angel woman into this you will probably have enough minus dp to minus 14k uh, on a magnet x for example and all that minus dp effect will linger until the end of their turn so meaning at the start of their turn when they lose the protection from magnet x that stack is going to instantly die uh probably the best ace choice for the deck there's some other choices you can run uh, I've experimented with both of the other aces from this set and they just did not feel as good. Now, do we have one of the BT14 Seraphimon? Um, I actually like this card a lot. The heal come in handy a lot of times because this deck, you kind of do turbo burn yourself in some situation. So just having access to an on-demand heal is very nice. And on top of that, it's just like if this card stay on board, it's just extra minus dp and security attack every time you trigger a security effect so pretty good card as a one of next we have to start the show this is your main you know big boss the minimon uh his effect is when he evolved you get to play a level five or lower angel typing from your security without paying cost notice that this is a burn so you do against compared to most other yellow effect that does something for security you do not get a security back um but it is um play a level five and often minus seven thousand dp so this combined really well with like archai into or like an angel woman effect um and on top of that 
His strongest effect is whenever any of your angel typing would leave the battle area by any effect that's not your effect or by battle, you just trash the security and stop it from happening. Um, note that there's a recent new ruling. Now, I'm not sure if it goes live yet, but what it essentially says is if there is an effect that pop multiple of your target at once, you can use this car protection effect just once by burning one security and it will cover a blanket uh, removal effect on your entire board. Next, we're playing Megalo Spark. Um, so this is pretty much similar reason as we'll, the reason that we would play Cherubi Ace. This card is actually incredibly cost efficient. Um, most of the time this card is going to be live. It's going to be 4 cost and it's minus 8k. So in general, by itself, it's going to remove most level 5. And then combined with your Angel Woman Ace, that's minus 14. So, you know, say goodbye to Mag Magna X at the start of turn. Very good card for this meta. Uh, you can opt to run more of maybe more healing or maybe wide boar removal if you're facing more issue against Numenmon for example if you're you know like if you're meta if nobody is playing Mana X because the card is simply too expensive then you know I can see taking this out for other tech options maybe like um the I forgot what's the card from BT15 for Angel Woman uh yeah Revelation of Light so this is uh, another pretty good card to have in your security but the issue with playing this is you're gonna have to try and fit Kari into your build somehow. So you probably have to play the Memory Tamer Kari as opposed to the Memory Tamer I'm playing in this build. But this is one way that you would try to play against Nume. Next, we have Emissary of Hope. Uh, it's card kinda busted. If you don't know, uh, for essentially one cost, you get to evolve any level 6 or less vaccine until you want your stack. And if you have a TK, you steal one. So essentially, one cost evolve into anything in your deck because everything is a vaccine typing. I would run this at higher count, but in a lot of situations, this is kind of bricky. So two feels like a pretty good amount. If you feel like you need to run more of this card, again, you can cut a mega low spark depending on your meta. Um, next, pretty standard for physical training. Um, I think any deck that evolved really should play for training. It's just a crazy consistency tool in this meta. And then we have two Emperor. Um, I think Digimon Emperor has become a card that has just stapled to our meta. At least until Uko get hit. Uh, if it ever get hit, of course. But opening this card early just prevent you from getting rushed down by any of the degenerate Uko deck, especially Numemon. So you can kind of be forced to play into this. And it's also, you know, very good into the mirror. Like, there's a bunch of level 3 now that do something when they move out of security. So you're forcing your opponent to either give up that give up that effect by digivolving into a level four first, or you know they move out and give you two memory. And it's also you know function as a draw. So pretty good card. Next we're playing two memory team with TK. Um, I've seen a lot of these bill in for the mini that just opt to not run memory tamer. I think that's a huge mistake, and the reason for that is because of Digimon Emperor. So if you don't run Memory Tamer, what end up happening is your opponent can just play a Digimon Emperor and then choke you at 1. And you, if you're on a Padamon or something like that, you move out, you immediately lose your turn. You don't hit your star main. So you just, you get forced to lose a turn because you're not playing Memory Tamer. That's just kind of silly in my opinion. Uh, and then finally, we run 3 of the BT14 TK. Car is kind of insane. Having this card early allow you to just guarantee your activation of your BT-14 Panamon. Um, it's an easy activation of your Angel Woman heal if, she, you know, she's on board. Uh, it's an easy way for you to gain memory if you have multiple of them. Just really good card in general. As I said, if you opt to play Revelation of Light, you can cut the Memory Tamer TK for Akari. And that's it. So... Personally, I think this deck is pretty cool. Um, realistically though, it's probably tier 2 until proven otherwise. It didn't really have that great result in Japan. But I, I do think you can uh, build it to be pretty com uh, competitive into Magna X. As you can see, 
with all the lingering minus DP on the opponent turn. Uh, your problematic matchup is probably going to end up being Numemon, and that will probably require... Uh, it's, that's really difficult. You probably have to try to fit in like even more tools than Digimon Emperor to deal with that deck. So, but yeah, um, that's all I have for you today. Bye-bye.